Hi, welcome to our channel. For today's video, we will recap a thriller film called The Menu from year 2022. The movie follows a pair who embarks to a distant island of an exclusive restaurant renowned for its extravagant cuisine, where the chef has prepared a menu full of shocking and astonishing twists. Have you seen this movie yet? If not, grab some marshmallows and enjoy. At the beginning of the film, we are shown Tyler and his date, Margot, who are waiting for the boat at the local dock that will transport them to a private island. There, they will have dinner at Hawthorne, a very exclusive restaurant run by Top Chef. Tyler is a food geek who is fascinated by this chef's techniques and the specifics of good dining in general. Joining them are other famous people such as food critic Lillian Bloom, her editor Ted, George Diaz, and other elite people. They get served with an oyster with a fancy name, but Margot is not impressed casually saying it's just an oyster with algae. Upon arriving, Elsa, the receptionist greets Margot with a different name. The mood turns a little awkward but Margot says it's okay. Elsa gives them a small talk about the island and explains that all the food they serve are top quality ingredients. She also explains that because of the remoteness of the island, all the staff members live on the island. The head chef lives separately though, which is off limits to visitors. When they eventually get into the restaurant, they find that the kitchen is an open space where they can observe the chefs at work. Elsa lets everyone know that while it's okay to watch the cooks in action, taking pictures is not. Tyler approaches right away and bombards the cooks with questions, but the guy tells him to sit down because they are about to serve. At that moment, head chef Julian Slowick appears as Elsa tells him something that causes him to look intently at Margot. An appetizer is served first. The guests take their time and enjoy the food. Margot isn't particularly fond of the dish, but she still entertains Tyler. A few moments afterward, the first course is served. To get all of his cooks to turn around simultaneously like dutiful little soldiers, Slowick steps forward and claps his hand. Then he talks about his work and advises everyone to enjoy and relish their food instead of just eating it. When Tyler tries to comment on that, Slowick merely chastises him for interrupting. Slowick claps once again as he introduces the second meal, explaining that although bread is the sustenance of the common man, his guests are not common, thus they will not be receiving any bread. They serve breadless plates with just a few drops of accompaniments. Margot finds it ridiculous, but the others are ecstatic. The Tech brothers request bread because like Margot, they also want bread, but even after pointing out that they work for the island's real owner, Doug Varick, Elsa's answer remains the same. Elsa ominously informs them that they will eat more than they deserve and less than they want. Tyler tries to take Margot's food for himself, but breaks a glass as he does. Slowick comes and wonders why Margot hasn't touched her food. But this is no food, says Margot. Slowick leaves, feeling heavily offended. The third dish gets ready to be served. Slowick claps once again to introduce the third dish called Memory. He begins to tell a story about his childhood taco nights with his family. One day, his father came home drunk and hurt his mother. In an attempt to save his mother, Slowick grabs a pair of scissors and stabs his father in the thigh. Slowick wishes he had killed him. The meal is a smoked chicken thigh, served with a pair of scissors inside to commemorate that taco night. This narrative disturbs everyone, each having their own opinions. Some like his dark humor, while others are completely bewildered. He further explains that the tacos are engraved using a laser machine. When Lillian looks at the taco, she sees an image of restaurants that have closed as a result of her negative evaluations, and is taken aback by pictures of her husband's personal life. One in particular depicts Richard going out on a date with another woman, despite Richard's insistence that it is all a joke. George discovers images from the movie Dr. Sunshine, which had a terrible box office reception upon its release. Tyler also gets his taco with an image of him taking pictures of the food. The Three Brothers image shows their company created invoices with fake charges. It seems that every image on the taco consists of bad things that they have all done. Margot wants to return the dish because she thinks the images are offensive, but Tyler yells at her and refers to her as a child for misbehaving. Margot gets offended by this and takes a break in the restroom. She leans against the window to smoke. At that point, Slowick shows up to ask Margot why she declined to eat again because her attitude has hurt him. But Margot simply states that she isn't all that hungry. Slowick is also curious about her true identity and finds it hard to believe her when she says she's just Margot from Nebraska. He tells her that she shouldn't even be in that place. Moments later, the chefs lay out some decorations and a piece of cloth on the floor to begin setting up the fourth dish. Slowick presents his chef Jeremy to the group. He is the one responsible for the creation of that dish. Slowick at first acknowledges his skill, but the next moment, he tells everyone how Jeremy desperately wants everything Slowick owns, and that he will never be great. 
While Jeremy may aspire to live a life of distinction similar to Slowick's, Slowick believes that his life is burdened by criticism and disgruntled clients who never value his work. When Jeremy replies that he does not want that life, Slowick kisses him on both cheeks and backs off before Jeremy pulls a revolver and unalives himself. Except for Tyler, who finds this fascinating, all of the guests freak out and withdraw as the other cooks observe quietly. Slowick invites everyone to sit down and accept this as part of the act while the body is being removed. Richard becomes frustrated, and everyone starts debating whether or not this is real. Elsa stops him when he tries to leave with Anne, saying there isn't a boat available. Elsa gives the chefs the order to seize Richard and take his ring finger. The other guests begin to panic once more. Elsa delivers the dropped wedding ring too, and as Richard writhes in agony on the ground. Lillian accepts Slowick's explanation that this is part of the menu once again. However, fear is beginning to set in for the others. Felicity suggests that George speak with Slowick whom she thought was his friend, but George admits that he lied to win her over. Elsa takes Margot into the kitchen. Slowick once again asks for her name, to which she adamantly says that her name is Margot. However, Slowick does not believe this and tells her she is not part of the plan. Slowick is curious as to whether Margot supports the patrons or the restaurants, but it won't matter which side she supports because he tells her everyone will die. Now, Margot gets the point of the menu served by this weird cooking staff. She tearfully goes back to her table and slaps Tyler who won't shut up. The entire atmosphere of the restaurant feels awkward and uneasy. Soren loses his mind and tries to smash a window with the chair, but it is made of unbreakable glass. Elsa sits him back in his chair. As the next meal, tea is offered to clear the palate, and Slowick uses the opportunity to ask if anyone has any questions. George goes forward and wants to know their current situation. Slowick replies and tells them to think of themselves as part of the menu. But this shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. Lillian, for instance, did a lot of damage to many people. So does everyone in the room. Elsa brings Margot a kitchen timer that indicates she has 10 minutes left. Richard requests to see a doctor, but Slowick notes that despite being the most devoted patrons for five years, they are unable to recall a single meal from their time spent here. Slowick put a lot of effort into becoming a highly upscale chef. It wasn't until recently that he realized he had been trying to please ungrateful individuals, starting with his own mother. Bryce corrects Slowick when he keeps calling the establishment his restaurant, pointing out that Doug Verick is the real owner. Except, things have changed and he now owns Doug. They show him hanging outside while donning the angel wings. Dave gets up and fearfully offers him any amount of money. Slowick rejects him saying he does not need any money. He flees but gets immediately caught by the guards. Bryce notes that although Doug continued to operate Slowick during the pandemic, Slowick complains that Doug was always criticizing his menu. Elsa makes a sign and Doug is submerged in the water till he drowns. Margot's table timer suddenly rings and she is requested to go see Slowick. When Margot acknowledges that she shouldn't be here, Slowick reciprocates by saying he can tell that she works in the same industry as him. He's trying to figure out why Margot was staring at Richard and forces to admit her background. She tells that she once provided a rare service to Richard who asked her to pose as his daughter while he did some questionable things. Slowick and Margot concur that they used to love helping people, but that unhappy customers have turned them into people who detest their work. Slowick then ushers everyone outside. The next course would be introduced by Catherine Keller. She has repeatedly rejected Slowick's advances on her. Though Slowick didn't dismiss her, he stopped talking with her for eight months. This served as the inspiration for the following dish, Man's Folly. Slowick then apologizes after Catherine stabs him in the leg, gives him a hug, and stains his chef clothed with blood. Now, he announces that every male visitor has an opportunity to leave. They will have a 45-second head start, after which the crew will attempt to catch up with them. Except for Tyler, all the guys start running, so Slowick has to send him outside while Catherine brings the women inside. Sitting at the same table with Catherine, the women sample the sixth course. She starts crying at Lillian's praises, so the other women start praising her too in an attempt to cheer her up, and then inquires as to how Margot knows her husband. She is silent at first, but in the end, Margot confesses that she is from Massachusetts and goes by Aaron. Meanwhile, the men hide in the beach or the forest, and the staff follow them and discover them one by one. They are seated once again. Slowick then comes and says the menu won't be able to on as scheduled unless they sort out an issue. Tyler is forced to admit that he had always known that everyone will die on tonight's menu. Tyler went on a date, but his girlfriend ended things. Since the restaurant didn't take bookings for just one, he hired Margot to go with him. Margot gets furious over this discovery and attacks Tyler, but the crew breaks them up fast. 
After pointing out Tyler's culinary prowess and giving him a chef's suit, Slowick forces Tyler into the kitchen and demands that he prepare food in front of everyone. Slowick makes fun of Tyler for being a complete amateur, so it's no surprise that his cooking is sloppy and the result is a complete mess. He tells him that he is the reason why mystery has been drained in their art. Slowick then whispers something in his ear, causing Tyler to remove his chef jacket and start crying. Later, Slowick approaches Margot one-on-one to request a favor. They need to start making dessert, but Elsa neglected to bring the big barrel that should be in the corner. Elsa believes the staff can handle it, but Slowick wants Margot to go get it. Slowick eventually makes his way back to the dining area. George remarks that this isn't really fair. Slowick reveals that George is being punished since, years ago, he saw Dr. Sunshine and he lost his motivation. Felicity, on the other hand, receives judgment because of her social standing in life. Margot arrives at the smokehouse, but she takes a knife rather than the barrel. Later, she enters Slowick's home in secret, which is an identical replica of the restaurant. Margot tries to exit through the silver door, but Elsa stops her, reminding her that this section is off-limits and brandishes her own knife. Margot is abruptly attacked by Elsa, who tells her she doesn't want to be replaced. Margot uses kitchen utensils to defend herself while stating that she does not want to work here. Elsa, though, asserts that she did not remember any barrel, it's just that Slowick did not mention any. After the two women struggle on the ground, Margot accidentally kills Elsa. When Margot gets over her first terror, she uses Elsa's keys to unlock the silver door. She discovers a modest room filled with Slowick's recollections of his happier days as a young man with a family and a hamburger-making career. Additionally, the room has a radio, which Margot attempts to use it to request help. When Margot bursts in through the front door holding the barrel, Slowick reminds her that although he was once a monster, everything he does now is pure. Because he can no longer be injured, his chef hands are so strong that he can touch flames without experiencing any pain. When a boat gets closer to the island at that point, Slowick commends Margot on using the radio. Slowick poses a threat as the staff quickly cleans every one of any bloodstains. The visitors will kill an innocent guy if they ask for assistance. When Coast Guard Dale walks into the diner, he asks what the issue is, but no one is brave enough to say anything. Then, realizing that Dale is a huge admirer of Dr. Sunshine, George pretends to offer him an autograph when he sees George. Dale realizes the note genuinely says, help us, and as he is ready to depart, he draws a weapon prepared to defend the guests. Dale holds the pistol against Slowick for a few seconds before turning around and aiming it toward Margot's table's candle, exposing it to be nothing more than a gun-shaped lighter. Dale goes back to the kitchen as he's not a Coast Guard, but rather one of Slowick's employees. Slowick expresses his extreme disappointment in Margot for betraying him pointing out that she is like the rest of the people behind her. Recalling what she witnessed in the house, Margot chooses to take a chance. She abruptly claps to catch Slowick's attention and says she wants to return his food because she doesn't like it. Margot argues that none of the dishes were meant to be enjoyed, but rather were just used as an intellectual exercise. She further says that she wants to eat a real cheeseburger, not some fancy deconstructed feces, but a real cheeseburger, and she's very hungry. Slowick smiles and agrees to make a classic cheeseburger and fries for $9.95 for the first time after so long. The cooks are all fascinated by how content Slowick appears as he makes a classic cheeseburger which he proudly serves to Margot. After taking a bite, Margot declares that it tastes good, but she also requests that the remainder be taken to go because she finds it to be too much. Slowick wraps it in a box and thanks Margot for dining. Though she hesitates to leave because the others are still in danger, Slowick gestures for her to proceed. Margot hurriedly goes to the docks to escape. Meanwhile, Slowick reminds everyone that it is time to pay. After dressing the floor like a platter, the chefs dress the guests in marshmallow vests and chocolate caps, Slowick informs everyone that they are a part of his life's ruin and that they get to be part of it. Thus, the dessert is going to be the most aggressive attack on the taste buds of people. The marshmallow, this is typically cooked over a fire. Slowick, therefore, uses his bare hands to pull a lump of coal out of the oven and puts it over the mallows the cooks left behind. This starts a fire that spreads throughout the restaurant and kills everyone within. The movie ends as Margot looks behind the burning place. She takes a look at the menu and takes a big bite from the burger. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoy the movie. See you in our next video.